All right, offense. Now, here's the guy in red, the only guy in red on offense, and it's the most maybe important guy, and yeah. that's Trent Williams, who did not report. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't blame him. He he should be like, hey, man, what are you going to do? I mean, yeah. I'm the team, really. I mean, what are you going to do without me? So um, what's what's going on? That's what he's doing. He he looks I, – I promise – if if you're if you're Trent Williams, you are taking tape of the starting <laughs> offensive line during the preseason, and you're highlighting the left side, and you're just sending it to the 49ers with a number written on it, whatever yeah. number he's looking for. <laughs> uh, and I, and I think the 49ers know that, and that's that's kind of the thing. There's no there's no question in the building what Trent Williams means to this team. I think it's just a matter of they have to figure out the Brandon Ayuk thing. They know that they're going to be paying Brock Purdy upwards of $60 million a year starting uh, next off season uh, or starting next year. Um, so I think that there's, there's a ton they have to try and figure out and uh, figure out while doing, while establishing or maintaining the sustainability that's allowed them to be a Super Bowl contender for for basically six seasons now. Yeah. Uh, it's tough, but at the same time, this is why those guys get paid the big bucks. And I just don't think there's any excusable reason that they don't figure it out with Trent Williams before week one. Yeah, yeah like that's, that's just you. You have a franchise quarterback that you're planning on paying a ton of money to, and you're going to line him up against a Jets defense that might be the best in football. And you're going to line him up with Jalen Moore at left tackle? Like, okay, cool. That, that just a, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, yeah. uh, man, they 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 as as ugly as the Brandon Ayuk thing is, and as as convoluted and as much of a roller coaster as that has been, uh, the Trent Williams one is the one they they need to figure out by the time the season starts. All right, so we're going to wrap it up with uh, maybe the biggest story. Everybody's going, how could you not talk about Brandon Ayuk? What are you, what are you waiting for? Anyway, oh. so here it is. And by the way, I must remind everybody that when we did the show a few months ago, I asked this uh, this gentleman here, what do you think about all the trade rumors? What's going on with Ayuk? And Kyle, you basically said uh, he's not going anywhere. Uh, this is all smoke. This is all talk. Uh, we said, we've seen it before with Debo and so forth. And he ain't going nowhere. And I asked you the question again a couple of weeks ago because I knew we were going to talk eventually. And uh, you, yeah, you you didn't change your stance, even though there's so many. Oh, he's, he's going here. He's going there. Why, look at this. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, have you changed your mind at all? You th still think Brandon Nayuk is lock solid, definitely more than likely, definitely going to be a 49er? I'm like 80 20. He's going to be a Niner. Okay. It's come down just a little bit. Okay. The only, the it, it just, the only. The reason trading him never made sense, and this has been the case really since the draft, the only way that trading him makes sense is if you're going to get a piece back that helps you this year. Yes. When they didn't trade him during the draft, their chances to add a piece that was going to help them as much or more than Brandon Ayuk is going to this year went down significantly. So from what I understand, they were trying to get a pick uh, high enough in the draft that they could draft one of Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, or Marvin Harrison Jr. When that ship sailed, they, I, I don't think they were interested in in trading Brandon Ayuk for a draft pick anymore. So, I still I look at the Steelers roster, and I I look at what they might be willing to deal, and I don't see a player that can help the 49ers as much or more than Brandon Ayuk. That's not to say like T.J. Watt would obviously he's he's oh, yeah, one of the three best yeah. defenders in the league, but they're not trading him no. right. So so the players who would be available are, aren't going to help the 49ers. And and you have a Steelers team that's like, yeah, we'll take Brandon Ayuk if we can get him for basically nothing. And a Niners team that's going, yeah, hey, we'll give you Brandon Ayuk if you give us a King's Ransom. And and those two things just never, never really matched. So I, I think that's the case. They they had trades worked out with with Cleveland. They had trades worked out with, with New England. And when Ayuk didn't want to go to those two places, I thought it was kind of a wrap on the whole trade thing. And everything else beyond that was going to be smoke. Because the Patriots were going to give him what, whatever the reporting was, $32, $33 million a year. He wants to win. He wants to be part of a team that's going to contend. And I know the Steelers have contended for a while, but they haven't won a playoff game since, what, 2016? True. Um, they're going to finish above 500 every year. We know that with Mike Tomlin. He's one of the best coaches in the league. Totally get it. But you look at that quarterback situation, I don't think that's a place Brandon Ayuk necessarily wants to go. 
And I don't think the Steelers have anything to offer the 49ers where they're going to be jumping at the at the opportunity to move on from Ayuk. So you wind up with this staring contest where uh, the 49ers and Ayuk both believe they have the leverage. The reporting now is that they're close on a deal, but they've got to overcome one hurdle in the final year of the deal. I think Ayuk probably wants some some guaranteed money sprinkled in there where the 49ers want that gar- want to have no guaranteed money, so they have some flexibility on either moving on or being able to restructure that contract or whatever it is. Uh, to me, if he wants a little guaranteed money in the fourth year, give it to him because the risk reward of that uh, is does not does not make a ton yeah. of sense yeah. to me. I, I mean, Brandon Ayuk's a good player. He's twenty six. Sure, keep him around. Okay, and then by the way, I just stopped here because I interviewed David Harrison, uh, locked on Commanders. And he talked about the rumors. And when he told, he reminded me about, well, first of all, Peters is the new GM. Uh, Daniels played with Ayuk and is friends mm-hmm. with him. I was mm-hmm. like, you know what? If there was a place that I could see Ayuk going to and saying that, you know, and, and then this would be a really good, you know, match, well, that did make sense to me actually more than the Steelers based mm-hmm. on those relationships. So yeah. what about, what about the commanders? All right, so I I and just to tack on to that, they just added a third round pick from oh. the uh John Dotson trade. So Good point. uh my my take on this is I don't I don't disagree. Like all of those puzzle pieces puzzle pieces line up. The problem is save for the third round pick for John Dotson. Yeah. Uh all of this was the case months ago. True. And the commanders were one of the teams that Brandon Ayuk had permission t- to talk to one of the four teams. It was Cleveland, New England, Pittsburgh, and, and Washington. And the Niners worked out trades, had parameters for trades with three of those teams. Washington was the only team that didn't have the parameters for, for a trade with the 49ers. Oh, okay. which leads me to believe that either they value Ayuk probably about the same way the 49ers do. And they went, well, we're not going to pay him what he's asking for. So we're just not going to get involved. Or they just don't think the 49ers are going to trade him. So they don't, they didn't want to waste their time. They didn't want to be used as leverage. I just, I, I think every, every reason that the commanders would want to get involved in the Ayuk sweepstakes was probably the case a long time ago. And the fact that they haven't gotten involved to this point, Leads yeah. me to think that they are not going to get involved at all, even if it does make all all, all that sense. Sure, I, I uh, and that. I think that, and I think the 49ers would would probably if if the Commanders called the 49ers would start with okay, give us Terry McLaurin and a pick, and the Commanders are obviously not going to do that uh, because the whole the whole point would be having McLaurin and Ayuk, and I think once once you hit that roadblock, then I I, I think the talks are probably over. <laughs> 